Hi guys, today I'm combining two things that I find really fascinating into one single painting. The first thing is oil paints and the second is paint pours. I have been really interested in this for a while now. It looks absolutely incredible. I'll talk more about that as we get into it, but but it's uh, something that I've wanted to bring into my own style and make it my own and find a way to, to bridge the gap between this very abstract kind of a approach to art and then bring it into something that I really love and that's painting characters. So today I'm going to start off with doing a paint pour for the background and then adapting a sketch and then painting on top of that as as the background. Uh, but first I do want to give a really quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I, I absolutely love them. I love their product. They're an online learning community where they have thousands upon thousands of classes on so many different creative things that you can do. There, there's so much more than just art and I find that stuff to be really very inspiring one. I just want to feel creative and get ideas flowing, going through and just looking through all of the different classes that they have over on Skillshare has really jumpstarted a lot of ideas and, and things that I've I've found a lot of inspiration from. Uh, specifically what I'm working on today, this paint pour combination. This is something that I, I went over on Skillshare and I looked at all of the classes that they do have on fluid acrylic paint pouring so that I could get a better understanding on how to actually do it. And there will be a link down in the description and that will allow you to get two months free for the first 500 people to go sign up for that. So again, the link is right down in the description so you can go check it out and see if you like how, how it works with your process. But let's go ahead and jump right in with, with this, this painting. So, so with the paint pour, I, in my head, before I started this, it seemed really easy. <laughs> like, like it would just come together and the paint would be doing all of the work. And as long as I had the right concoction of medium and water and paint, it would all just work. And I, I am actually pretty humbled by this process in a good way, I guess, because because all this time I'd look at these amazing looking paint pours, but I was not giving the actual artists enough credit. Once I started testing this out, this process, it was very clear that there's a lot that can go wrong with it easily. And I ended up doing a couple a couple totally scrap test ones and then a couple that kind of started working and then a couple more and finally I decided to take the plunge and do it on an actual final panel for this one. A few things I learned about paint pouring is originally I was mixing it way too thin. I thought it needed to be just really, really liquidy, almost like milk or water. But I found that when I was actually comparing it to how people were mixing their paints and then adding it to the final cup for the pour, the paint would sit on top of it rather than sinking straight to the bottom. And that's what mine was doing originally. So, so that was the, the biggest thing was just finding the right ratio. So what I was using is I used paint and then I used a little bit of water and a lot more of a medium called airbrush medium for acrylics. What it does is it evens brush strokes out. Well, actually it completely eliminates brush strokes and it makes it so that it's a sprayable consistency if you add enough. Basically, there's a lot of different mediums that you can use to, to do paint pouring. You kind of want to think about using a medium because acrylics, if you add too much water, it does start to break down. So it has the potential of, if you add too much water to get a really thin consistency, it could end up breaking down the paint itself. But if you're using a medium, it can help bind it together. So that's what I did. I, I did those. I have read a lot where people get really amazing cells and that's where you get like the almost bubble eye effect that you'll see. But you, because it's silicone, it repels paint. And since I'm painting on top of it, I did not want to have to have any struggle with that. So I completely omitted that. I just went in with, with those three ingredients. I mix them out depending on how thick the paint was. Again, that's something that you just really have to play by ear depending on the, the thickness of the paint itself. I was using some that were really thin already, so they needed a lot less water and a lot less of that medium. And then the more higher end paints that I was using, the more professional level acrylic paints, those tend to be a lot thicker so I had to add a lot more of the medium to get it to the consistency that I needed to. I also needed to make sure that all of the paints were the same consistency. They were all the same thickness. And I did one test 
one of the more final tests where I realized that I really needed to think about how each paint would be mixing together with all the other paints because I did this like blue, black, white kind of a paint pour and it uh, ended up mixing the white and the black quite a bit. So it ended up mostly gray, this really just detoned gray color. And I didn't love that at all because I did want this to look like a galaxy. That's what my plans were to have this as a space setting. So, so that didn't work. I, I actually decided to scrap both the black and the white from the original. And then I just had a couple different shades of blue. And then I had this really vibrant purple. And those are the things that I ended up going forward with. And I also use a little bit of black around the bottom. You'll see there, I actually use that as a little bit of a base where I put it down before I tipped over and started the actual paint pour. I had black down there because I wanted there to be a little bit of a, a weight at the bottom of the painting rather than just an omnipresent texture over the whole background. I tried to think it through a little bit like that where it could still be very organic and it would do its own thing, but there would be a little bit of heaviness to the bottom. And a big thing that I had to do to actually complete this kind of a project is so I, I've done a lot of research as far as oil paintings, and I know that oil painting, you can paint on top of acrylics. You can't do it the other way around. You can't do acrylics on top of oils based on the curing and the drying process of each of them. So I was planning on just painting right on top of the acrylics with my oils and it was going to be nice and easy. But as I was doing the first layer of the oils itself, I realized how incredibly slick the acrylics were. The oil was just sliding around on top of it, you could see not just brush strokes, but through each like bristle, it would just carve right down to the, that base layer that I had on there. So it was looking terrible and it was just smudging around and I couldn't get any crisp edges or control or anything. Luckily I did actually have some clear gesso. So I just actually wiped off all of that oil paint that I'd already put down with my, with my cleaner or not my cleaner, my Gamsol. And then I just applied that clear gesso on top and it was the absolute perfect cure. It gives the, the surface a little bit of grit to it, a little bit of tooth, and then the, the oil paints would just stick right to it. And honestly, that was kind of a reminder that I absolutely love the texture of oils, the way that it binds together and emulsifies together and how it slides on top of the surface that I'm painting on. But acrylics has this really slick, plasticky texture and I definitely prefer the oils. So I'm getting a little bit out of order here. So I think I'll backtrack and just do the basic step-by-step -step steps that I did to get to this final. So after I did the paint pour, I let it dry for a day because it was really thick acrylic. So it had to dry all the way through. And then after that, I transferred my sketch using just transfer paper. I'll actually have that link down in my description if you want to check that out and see what I actually used. I was a little bit worried about how well it would transfer, but it did pretty well but it was very hard to see because the background was so textured and then it was just this kind of light blue line work on top. So immediately after that, I just went in with acrylics to apply this base coat to each individual object. And I had my sketch right next to me. That way I could follow along and make sense of this really confusing set of, of texture and lines and everything was just blending in. So. That was extremely helpful. If I was going in with my my first layer with oils on top of that textured background, it would be a lot harder to make sure that everything was filled in correctly and I wasn't missing anything. So I'm really glad that I did that base layer first and got that established. So I think the thing that I struggled the most with on this piece was figuring out the colors. So because the background had these really bright saturated colors, I had to really take that into consideration when I was designing the character. And I, uh, I'm not sure that I really achieved necessarily what I wish that it looked like, but I think I am happy with it. And I, th I think that I tried something different than I would normally have, which is, is exciting in a lot of ways to at least stretch my wings and try something else out. But, but yes, I, I didn't want her to be too monochromatic to balance out that really saturated background. So I still wanted color to be there. I just didn't want her to be equally saturated. I decided that I wanted to kind of take some cues from from certain military outfits and old, old NASA spacesuits. Um, obviously what she's wearing is not space appropriate, but, but I still wanted it to feel kind of like this mix between fantastical and science fiction based 
kind of clothing. So, so I went with this more olive army green color. And ultimately, after I finished painting her and the Ard Wolf, I needed to find a way to bridge the gap between the background and her. So of course I wanted her to stand out, but there were certain details that I could put in to help marry the two together so that I felt like they belonged together. Uh, the first big one was I went in with a blue colored rim light on the character and the Ard Wolf, and that was blue obviously like the background so that it would have that kind of color and it would show that she would be connected with that background like she really was in that space. And I also added, and I think this is probably the thing that I think really finished the piece in a way it made me feel a lot better about it, is I went in with these little, they're not really stars, they're kind of very abstract I guess in concept, but, but they're just these little colored balls floating around her. They're they're kind of like stars where they're glowing a little bit. Some of them are blue, some of them are green, but I did make sure that I was using the same green that I used in the character so that as you're looking at the background, there's a bit more green to it. And as you're looking at the characters, there's a little bit of blue to it. And don't forget to check out that link down in the description for Skillshare. Again, I personally love what they do over there. I love being able to learn from Skillshare. I also have this original painting available. So if you'd like to own this, there is a link down in the description that'll take you over to my art shop where there's lots of other art goodies as well. And I have a link to my Patreon, which is a great way to help support this channel and the artwork that I do. I really do want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys mean the absolute world to me. But that is it for today. So I'll be back next week with more, more paintings, more videos. So I'll see you then.